Scrub, I'm on YouTube. Yay, we did it! <laughs> Finally, Monday, fun day, Monday, fun day. Hello, everybody. I am Ani with Jewel Tool. I am uh, happy to be here this Monday afternoon. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. You know, it was Mother's Day weekend. Um, I know it's a little unconventional considering all this stay at home, home place, place, home, all that stuff. Um, but I hope you guys made the best of it, the most of it, and were able to just send love to your loved ones. And that's all that we could do is just have love. So, yes, so by popular demand, man, we have extended the Mother's Day sale only till tonight for the free shipping and then today's the last order to pre-order the last day to pre <laughs> the Monday last day to pre-order the four inch scrubbies you guys so if you guys haven't gotten on that little bandwagon to save some money on the pre-order today's the last day to pre-order your four inch scrubby this is the largest scrubby versus the three inch you guys see the difference there so um t so today you guys is going to be a fun day and i know that you guys will utilize what i'm going to teach some way shape or form so i want to say hi to everyone who has popped in to my party so who is here tell me guys i would love to say hello to everybody We've got Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Hope you had a fabulous weekend. And Kat and Karen and Ellen, welcome, welcome. Susan and Kathy and Carolyn, I welcome you to the fun day Monday. Carol, Nicole, and my girl Heidi, welcome. And today, will we sing on YouTube? What do we have? We got Tom from Arizona. Welcome, Tom. And Holly. Yay. And Fluffy Smudge. God, I love that name, Fluffy Smudge. And where, where's Fluffy Smudge from? From the UK. Cheerios. Hold on. I'll help you, Kristen. Stop that, Yarrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we got two people talking in my ear and I'm like stop okay so uh, I welcome you guys all to the Monday broadcast live from here in Los Angeles California so today you guys okay so I just want you guys to know I've expend extended the sale only because I've received emails over the weekend some people weren't able to do things or work their finances on the weekend and so they asked me please so you know what i am there's a big s over me like sucker i will like ask me and i'll do it i promise so i've extended it till today midnight you guys midnight i don't even know eastern standard time or whatever but it's, in, it's midnight i'll give you details later but today i am going to be working on glass and when i say glass um it's basically like used glass, any kind of glass that you make a jewelry, but a lot of the, or even like the enamel jewelry, but anything that involves some sort of glass. But at the same token, you guys, just like we made, remember this we made on Friday? Hold on, make sure it's smashed good. I'm gonna drop that. Remember the heart we made? on um on friday's show remember this little cutie patootie um the same diamond wheels pretty much that i use to work on stone is going to be pretty much the same st uh, diamond wheels i use to work on the glass so you guys it's almost a recap of how you do how you work on a stone but today I'll show you techniques on working on glass. And I actually have a fused piece of glass that has a chip in it. And 
I put this chip in it. I dropped it. You know me. I drop things. So I dropped it. There's a huge chunk of change right there missing. You guys see that? The big ch chip. The big hunk of ch chip missing right there. So I am going to remove that. Show you how to repair. So even if you guys have like a bead you bought and it has like this wonky lumpiness, I'll show you guys how to smooth that without doing the whole thing all over again. How to do touch up, how to do repair, how to shape it. So today is going to be really fun and a lot of the things that I'm going to do on the glass, I want you guys to know the same would work on like a stone, a gemstone. So I'm just going to be working with the diamond wheels and just show you real quick which diamond wheels I'm going to work on um, because I'm going to get to working on the glass really quick. So let me just give you guys a little run through of the diamond wheels I'm going to use. So let's go ahead and show you. So I am going to use, I'm going to show you the differences first with the coarse grinding uh, uh, diamond. So do you guys see, I'm going to move you down here, you're blocking the visual. So these are our grinding diamonds right here. You guys see that? So this is the extra, these are all extra coarse. These are like the grinding family. They, this is all they know us to do is grind. So, but out of this family, this is the extra coarse. This is the extra coarse medium. And this is the extra coarse fine. Well, we mark them so that people know that it's not a fine wheel by no, m no means. There's no fineness in this. It's just out of the family here that, you know, they have different grades of the grinding family. So today I'm going to show you why some I don't use all the time the very coarse one. And I choose sometimes to use the medium or the fine for the glass. And this will run true for if you have like um, stones. Remember, I always tell you if you have stones that are flaky, flaky or chippy, chippy, they just have an attitude and you just almost kind of want to flake off. So those are great options. So the same kind of rules apply on the glass. You know, enamel can be a little flaky, flaky and chippy. So that's why I'll opt for a finer grinding diamond. So. But for the most part, I'm going to be going through these steps. Again, the coarse, medium, fine, very fine, and using our felt wheel with the polishing compound. And I'll show you how I incorporate the finer diamonds in the 3,000, 8,000, and 50,000 on glass. So you guys, so do you guys see what I mean when I say very similar to the lapidary? It really is. Diamonds are work on hard materials and they work phenomenally on the stones and on the glass so without further ado i will start beginning our segment now i would like to welcome questions and just so you know after i'm kind of done showing the glass and you know the foundations of what to do with the glass if you have any other questions i would be more than happy to answer you and uh, if it's not even glass related just so you know i am here for you. This is what I'm doing. So this is not a pre-planned show. I just grab it and show you. And then if you guys want to see what, you know, something wor how something else works, just put a little comment below and I will be told in my ear. Kristen will tell me. So let's get started. What's happening? Ah, uh, Marge. Marge said, happy Monday, Ani. She's loving the live shows. Honestly, you guys, if I can show you the emails, messages that I am getting from all over the world on telling me how much these lives have helped you, I, I, can't, I, I, I am in awe. I am in awe, and I, it just makes me want to do more um, because my objective is to make sure you guys learn and make life easier for you. That's the whole reason why I created the Jewel Tool. I wanted life to be easier. So if I'm doing these lives and helping you, by all means, uh, you've got me here. So I, I'm here to help you guys. Yes, so David has already, David Roland, thank you. Hi, David. How you doing? Um, has told me that they also works on the Bolarite, Fordite, and something else. What was it? 
fights are fights. Okay, just wanted to put that out there. Thank you very much, David. How you doing? Uh, David had a cool video over the weekend. I kind of popped in. I got his live on, I think it was Saturday. Yeah, he, he was doing some really cool stuff. And he made a heart-shaped Polaroid. Beautiful pink heart. Really cute. Okay, so you guys, let's go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, overhead. So I will show you, okay, the differences of my finds. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, it's overhead. Okay, so you guys, I'm going to show you guys the differences on the grinding diamonds versus the extra cores. This is the one we used on the heart shape. And then I have my medium diamond right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put water in. You know, but let me remind you guys. Look, so if you guys look, I'm going to show you guys. This is the splash of what happened when we worked on this heart-shaped stone. Remember her? So cute. On Friday. So just be mindful to keep the dust from going into your spindle so you know i'm gonna put water here you guys but like just be mindful that to clean it dust it use a vacuum to clean it up but you don't want to get any kind of dust particles lodged into the motor i mean it's got a seal but we've had people that had a pile of dust here and sooner or later the finest particles do seep in after years so just to protect your jewel tool from any kind of harm just give it a nice little wipe every so often you see it didn't take much you know uh, not much of a cleaner too to begin with but i'm not asking you know to wipe down the whole thing but just a little something something just to protect especially this area so there that's my quick little cleanup tip so you guys i'm going to show you guys so this is the extra course now the extra course you can use on fuse glass so remember that fuse glass piece that i had that had the chip you guys see that chip so just so you know but a lot of people who even work on glass they also know the um how hard their glass is that they work on so you just don't want a glass that is going to be fragile and is going to flake and chip. So if you're working, let's say, on enamel, remember we did this one a few weeks ago, and when I did that enamel, since enamel can flake and chip, I opted to use the fine grinding. You know, so fine grinding in the medium is great for enamel, um, but the fused glass, you can get away with the coarse and the medium. So I'll show you guys the differences. Yes. Yeah, so you guys, I am going to be working on glass because we have some people just joining in. So I was just showing that the, the same methods that I used on, remember on Friday I did the heart shape? So the same methods that work on a stone is going to be working on glass. So even if you have chipped beads or anything that got chipped or you just want to smooth the lumpy, bumpy surface off. Hey, Yar, where's that uh, other fused glass that you said wasn't that obvious? I'm going to show you guys something else. So, or if you cut glass, like for example, this was uh, a cut piece and I polished it, for example. And then, or if you have a fused gl a piece that is a little lumpy, bumpy like this, you can polish it super smooth. So I'm going to show you guys how to achieve that with this. But do you guys see right now? So it's the same diamond wheels we're going to use like we do on lapidary. So I'm going to get rid of this really big chip right there. Do you guys see that chip? And it's just overall just really bad. And then if, again, if, yeah, you see, it's like really, really bad. Um, I'll just clean that up. And, you know, just let's see how it goes. I used to use this a lot at the glass show so it's wise if it's a dark colored um, piece use uh, like a silver sharpie to kind of I was gonna say Kristen what happened it was here on Friday Kristen and then look do you guys see this part I actually put that little bevel there I've done this at glass shows a gazillion times so if you guys see me at the 
glass and beach show in Vegas, you'd see that I've done this. So I'm going to be using the extra coarse diamond, and I actually said you can use the fine, but if the glass is hard enough to, you know, take the coarse, by all means, use the coarse, and it'll be so much faster. Thank you, Kristen. Kristen gave me a fresh Sharpie. Look at this now. Ooh la la. Look, so you can really see all the nasty lumps and bumps. Like, look, you guys, it's not even funny. Oh, we even have a chip back there. There's a chip everywhere. Look at that. I don't know. What do I do? Put this through a garbage disposal? Look, so now you guys really see the difference on the chips. And then you can even see there's a chip back here. And just also, it looks like teeth. Okay, so I'm going to start grinding it. So I'm going to put the vacuum on. Turn this sucker on. Give myself some water. You see how it stays... And so I'm going to hold it here and watch. Already the chip is gone. Ta -da! Not even hot or anything. Do you guys see that? And I'm nice and even. So I'll just continue getting rid of everywhere else. Okay. And then now, let's say I want to blend that in to the rest. Do you guys see that? I'm going to do the same thing I do for the cab. I'm going to roll it in, roll it in, just clean that all up, and then we'll turn it around and get rid of that choppiness in the back. Do you guys see that choppiness? I'm using the coarse diamond right now, the extra coarse. So while I'm here, so this, this is the finish you get with the extra coarse. Let it dry. It's, gonna it's still wet right now. So right here, and we were able to do it without any problems. But if you start seeing that it's starting to chip at this stage, you might want to go to the fine. This is the fine. Look, you guys, let me show you guys the fine. Mine are older. I don't have that fancy stamp. So just to give you an idea what the fine looks like, look. I'll go ahead and darken it let it get cold so this is what it looked like with the extra coarse and this is what the fine so it's a finer finish it's a finer grind so if you're worried about chipping this would be a great option Change that rub pattern a little. And there you have. Yes, glass comes out nice. You guys see that little bevel? I put I'm going to leave her there. I don't know. I kind of like her there. And if you guys want, here, let's say if I want to do another bevel, if you wanted to do another bevel, watch this. Okay, so I'm going to have to jump off of the fine to get my bevel back. I'm going to go put the extra course back on. Just real quick, if you're going to do a bevel, you know, just hold it there. There's really no magic. I'm going to darken this whole thing. So you guys see where I'm going to put the bevel. And just put a little spot. Like, let's see if you want to just put a little facet somewhere. Watch this. So just hold it there. Give yourself some water. And just hold it there. Look, let's say I just want to put that little, little bevel right there. Right there. Yes, so that I was just going to say, wow, who, who said that? They're so fast. So I was going to say, oh, Julie, hi, Julie. I know Julie Teeples. So it's true what Julie just said. So this is the flat I just made. So you guys, to fix all these little doodads, you'd have to stick it back into the oven, waste all that, you know, time, electricity, and sometimes you got the perfect you know, shade of dichroic, the colors, everything works. And sometimes you pop it in the oven and something went wrong. Something went south. And you're like, oh, fudge, why did I do that? But here you can just touch up anything real quick or even change the shape, add some bevels. Um, so I'm, okay, so from here, I'm going to go to, now you can do the coarse. I think I'm going to skip it because I did the fine and do the medium. So Aw, 
off. Fluffy Smudge, I love that name. Fluffy Smudge says, so impressive. I'm a genius. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that on the Monday. So now, you guys, I'm going to lightly touch it, just lightly. Just so you know, I'm barely gliding over it. And your objective is to kind of get rid of the scratch pattern. As you can see, I kind of tilted it a little instead of going in the same. I kind of tilted it a little, kind of changed that scratch pattern, worked that for me. Let's do the, let's do that bevel. Just hold it there. Kind of zhuzh it back and forth, zhuzh it back and forth. Kind of make sure you got all those scratches out. There you go. That looks good, doesn't that? Woo! And now clean up that back, what you got. See, just even that quick little zhuzh in the back. And we're good to go. Oh, yeah. Look at that. So let me clean that all up and dry it. Let's dry you, baby. And you should take a look at if you missed any spots here. If there's still some, if there's still some line patterns that you see when you're doing a facet like this, you might want to go back in and kind of change or kind of blur that. And I'll show you a technique on how you blur it. Let me show you. So I'm going to, so the pattern, the lines are in this direction. So I'm going to combat it in this direction. And I'm just going to zhuzh it and drop it. Watch this. So I'm going to change the rub pattern in this direction. Okay, got it nice and thin. Kind of change it all up. And so now, you when you look at it, you can't tell where the scratch pattern is. Do you guys see? That's kind of like blurring the scratch pattern. Kind of like changing it up one more time like this. Like, and there you go. So next step, next stop is the, so that was the medium. You can see, you see some of the black, you guys, that have come, that I, I got off. That's the dichroic that I'm working in. Do you guys see that? That black wasn't there before. But you can just, uh, just wash that right off. Do you guys see that? So that is actually the little dichroic being um, ground down because I went, I really went down there for the um, facet. So I'm going to use the fine. Again, give myself a good amount of water. I like to do this too ahead of time. Give myself some nice water so my hands aren't super wet. G and again, I'm going to darken it for you guys. You don't have to do this all the time, just so you know. Once you get muscle memory, you kind of zippity doo dah real quick. But I'm doing this so you guys see every little step I'm doing so you guys can replicate it. So you can copy me. So again, I'm going to hold it very light pressure. So you see the lightest pressure, I already get like this shine. Do you guys see that? And then now I'm going to roll. Oh, dot. look, one pass. One pass and you get that shine. It's not like I had to go over it 20 times to get that. So you're, if you're doing that too many times, that's like excessive wear and tear on your wheels for, you know, unnecessarily. So I'm just going over everywhere that I did, making sure my scratch pattern is changed. So now we're going to do the, so do you guys see that? How cool is that, huh? So cool. And so now I'm going to do the facet. So again, I don't remember what direction I'm in, but while I'm here, I'm going to change it up a bit. Kind of keep it on the wheel and just zhuzh it up and down. And then I drop it. Oh my God. How cute is that? So you guys, so that's it. So are you guys seeing what I'm saying with, so far everything we've done is very similar to what we did on Friday or any other stone that we worked on. We're following the same diamond steps. Remember this one we did too. So just so you know, make sure I got my lights on. Hold on. Yeah, oh, wow, what a difference that made. Yes, okay, good. So, you guys, I'm going to use the very fine. Why does my very fine get so dirty? The very fine got dirty. Um, I think, you know what's happened? When we worked on, when we worked on this, I silver sharpied the whole thing, remember? And I think this black... Is, is the diamonds are so fine. I think it's the black diamond, uh, the black Sharpie. So just so you know, if you guys get this, it's actually the Sharpie. So I still have plenty of diamond there. So we're going to keep you around. You live another day. 
So let's go ahead, and I don't care, I'm still going to do the Sharpie. You can actually do this at times, look. You can actually just kind of give yourself just a quick little reference point. You don't have to color the whole thing. I do that. As the, the it was really important to color the whole thing when we were doing the heart. I needed to see where that, you know, uh, middle point was. I need to see every curve. It was imperative. Like seeing on that was necessary. I don't care who you are and how talented you are. Oh, you guys love the lights? We're getting a lot of love from the lights. Yeah, the lights are nice. Thank you. Let me put the vacuum on. So again, I'm barely going to touch it. And already look at the shine that you get. Look at that. Oh, mamacita. So here, you just roll it in. Change your rub pattern. I'm not pushing hard. No pushy, pushy. Light touch. Just kiss the wheel. Just kiss. I mean, not kiss the wheel. Kiss the... Uh, just like a light kiss. So I'm going to hold it there. Kind of get it going. Where is it? Right there. Oh my. You guys see that? Like This is like nuts. So I'm going to make sure I get that back side. Because we can't forget about you. So there we are. So this is what the finish looks like off of just the very fine. You guys see that? That's the finish off the very fine. Now, from here, okay, so look, I'm going to give you guys a little tip. So I ground pretty far deep in the dichroic, okay? Here, I know I did. I could see it, and I, I, I could see it. I saw it even on my medium wheel. Remember that little black, you know, dislodging there? So I am going to stay away from using the felt wheel to polish the, um, what do you call it, uh, to polish the, this area with the felt wheel. So I'm going to use the felt wheel, you guys, to only polish the, um, this surface, not the facet. And I'm going to show you, because what the felt will do then, it'll start digging in those lines of the dichroic and that's something you do not want so I'll show you guys right now what the finish looks like on regular glass real quick but I know that in this circun uh, circumstance I ground and you can see it if you guys look really good you can see the lines of the dichroic can you see that texture fibrous. the fibrous texture look. really can you see that Oh my God, Tom said that? That is hilarious. Tom said it has the same shine as the top of his head. I love you guys. You guys are like the funniest. That's... Yeah? So you guys, take a look at the shine off of the felt wheel. Do you guys see how perfection that is? And you're going to get that on um, the enamel, and you're going to get that on even if you work on cloisonne. Because we got a question on the cloisonne enamel. Yes, so earlier in the, um, a few videos ago, this was all cloisonne, this, was all, this is all metal. So the same wheels that I'm using are the same wheels I used on grinding this enamel cloisonne. So these are all cloisonne. So like if I'm going to polish, for example, I already did half of this. You can see one side is very lumpy, one side is super smooth. You would actually polish the whole surface. The only problem is, is that you're going to get some black on your, on your, oh, look how prettier that got. Woo! You you're going to get some black on your felt. And I've addressed this in the past. Do you guys see the black right there? So what you do is you just simply, I'm going to hold this. I didn't forget about this fast. I'm going to show you guys how to take care of that. So again, you guys, I'm going to take a little block of wood with some sandpaper. You don't have to do this all the time. After you're, you know, you're done with your project, you do this. You don't have to do this after every use. I repeat, don't do this after every use. 
it's not necessary so you just lightly sand it like this like lightly don't go crazy just a quick little light lip de do give yourself some uh, so it'll look like this wait let me show you it'll look like this before i put the sandpaper so you can sand a little bit more if you that color bothers you but honestly it's really not going to bother the next thing I do. You can do it more. Look, let me show you. If you uh, some people are perfectionists. Hold on. Let me satisfy everyone's needs. Hold on. Let me show you. You go like this. I just did it really lightly. Because you can just do more. Just hold it there a little longer. And you can get rid of it. There you go. Okay. But for the most part, this is what it should look like. There you go. You're still going to have a little bit of a remnant. But it's not a problem because you're still going to load it with compound. Look. And so now all you need is just those fresh, clean fibers to start working and you're good as new. Okay. So that should take care of that. Now, now I'm going to satisfy the, um, the facet. So the facet, you guys, can be done with the premium diamonds. Remember I told you we might be using the brown diamonds? These are the brown, yeah, I'll show those. Can you swipe and show the brown diamonds? Because mine are so ugly. Real quick. So again, the, these are the brown diamonds. I'm going to show you the guys what they look like in real life. Do you guys see them? Where are they? Oh, there they are. Okay, so yeah, so you would do 3,000, um, 8,000, and 50,000. And then you can follow with the cerium if you still feel you need it. But let me show you guys what I mean. So, I, yeah, let's do the overhead. Let's go ahead. So I'm going to do all the grades. So I'm going to do the 3,000. Here we go. That's the 3,000. Mine are so old. Look at this. This is when we, again, we didn't stamp them back in the day. So now we stamp them real pretty. Look, step 3, 50,000, diamond, slow speed. Back then, you got nothing. So let's go ahead and... Um, so yes, I would use this. So I got a question. Would I use the same felt for glass? Here it is felt. For glass and stone? Yes, absolutely. You don't need to have two different felts for. So I can use it on this and then I can use it on the stone. And actually I did. I, this was the same one I used when we polished the heart last Friday. So there we go. So yes, that's a good question. I'm glad you guys see, keep coming. So now with the brown, since the brown is so uh, so fine, I don't want to clog my diamond up with too much of the Sharpie. So just give yourself a quick little reference point. Do you guys see how I just did two little dots? Just to know where I'm making contact. And that's all. So I've got the 3,000 on. So you're going to run this at slow speed. Oh, okay. I just want to show you guys this immediately. Okay. So do you guys see this? Do you see how it combated those fibrous lines? Just the 3,000 alone. Yara, I don't know. Is this coming out as clear? Like, like, yeah, I don't know if you can zoom in more, but I can even show you with a loop. I have no problem showing loops. Bring it up closer. Do you guys see how there's no more of that? There's no more of the fiber. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So that was with the 3,000. Do you see? It just took two seconds and boom. I mean, honestly, a lot of people I show this at the glass show and they're like, oh, that's gorgeous. That's perfect, Donnie. And I'm like, no, wait, we still have two more steps. So it's hilarious when that happens. So again, you can just give yourself a quick little dot so you know where you are. A nice little reference point, if you will. Slow speed. You know, honestly, at this polish, I could have just gone to the 50,000, you guys. Just a quick little 8,000, just for good measure. And there we go. Look, that's 8,000. It's like crazy. So, yeah. So, if you do a lot of cold work, this is like <laughs> the answer from God. I'm not joking, because I know that. I know a lot of people that do cold work, they love this jewel tool. 
And there you go. So that's a 50,000. That's the same one we keep using. My favorite, favorite wheel on the all the world. So again, just hit yourself a little bit of a little reference point. Again, you don't want to use a lot of the marker because that marker will transfer over onto the finer diamonds, just like you saw it do on my very fine. Just a little helpful Ani tip. Good. Flash the item number on the screen. So this is a 50,000 running at slow speed again. And this is a kit I'm using. So if you have a glass, Paul, if you have a glass kit and you want to up your game, like I'm talking, that's 50,000 guys. Like you can do the, uh, you can do the lapidary, the glass, the enamel, any kind of stone with this diamond. So, God, that came out so pretty. It's like nuts. So, <laughs> it looks like glass. <laughs> so, you guys, so I hope that helped with, you know what? This needs a little spruce. This has been throwing, uh, floating around in my, um, what's it called? In my junk of stones and everything. So, even if you need to just spruce up your glass just a little, take that 50,000. But you can see, I didn't use the 50,000 on this, and you can still, s you can see the fibers. Do you guys see the fibers there? Yara, can you see the fibers? Yeah, so this is done without the, um, the felt. See, I knew I have done this before. Mm -hmm. You see that? You can see, no, you can see that. Yeah, we, Susan, she's so cute. I love this so much. By hand and by other tools, it takes forever. This is the situ this is why, you guys, I created the jewel tool. You know, I, I was a master detailer. Like, I used to use that file like nobody's business. Yeah, because I'm going to show something else. Yeah, so you guys, you guys can file till your hands cramp up. But I don't want that for you because I have sat at this very bench and live that life. I don't care how many people tell you, take that file, take that file, all your files, and just, just get in there. What the fudge? I'm gonna sit there and waste my life? Oh, think about it, you guys. Are we still using rare? You know what I'm reading, the dial phone? We're still doing that? Yeah, it was working back then, but technology has come a long way, and guess what? I can tell Siri, Siri, call my husband. Siri, call my daughter. Which daughter? You know, I'm just telling you. This is like the iPhone, the Tesla, a power tools. Get it straight, people. You want to sit and do this? You can do it all you want. America, free country. But... I don't want to do that anymore because I've had it. So I can grind, file, and finish faster than any jeweler sitting on this bench. You know how I know so? I get, I used to be there, first of all, but I also get the status reports from all the factories. The factory status reports, you know, yes. So I was just, who said time is money? Tom. Tom, it's true. I was just going to tell you, I get the reports um of the production reports from factories and they i always see how much the jewel tool has increased production i got one report 25 percent i got another one 32 percent increased production using the jewel tool but you know what that translates into bunch of these that's all they see they don't give a crap if they're helping ani with jewel tool <laughs> All they see is a big dollar sign when I walk through their door. Whoop, there's Ani. All they see is this. Because they have in increased productivity and in saving money. Plain and simple. Because why I incorporate new technology. New technology. New. You know? So <sighs> that's why it irritates me so much when I see these jewelers who know, not only who know, who have a jewel tool. You know what I'm saying, what I'm saying? And they tell you, why don't you use this? Why don't you use this? I want to take this and throw it because I get so angry. Like, it's almost a disservice to the people out there. 
you know, I actually show things that I don't sell because I love, I love the quality and I want you guys to be benefiting from the technology and the speed of doing something. You know, so I find that it's a complete disservice and it's dishonest in my opinion. So on a positive note, we just did a fused glass. Now, I'm going to show you some more stuff. Um, what else should I show you? So I showed the fused glass. Okay, so you guys, I hear you guys are on this bandwagon right now. The comments are pouring in. Will there be a jewel tool carrying case? Okay, so you guys, you know I had the Ani's essential bag. Uh, I can show it. Does anyone have it? I'll show it to you guys. And we actually sold out of this. And the reason why I didn't reorder more is I kind of wanted to improve on it, maybe put wheels on it. But you know what would help tremendously? because my manufacturer can make it, is hearing feedback from you guys, because I'm like torn. I don't know, would you guys like wheels on it? Do you guys like this carrying case? Do you like what I have currently? They're getting it right now. I mean, I use it to travel with all the time. So if you guys see me at a trade show, you know, or you run into me in the airport, I have an Ani bag. We call it the Ani bag. My kids use the Ani bag at the college. My dad loves his Ani bag to go to work out in his uh, LA Fitness because he says it fits perfectly in his locker and it fits everything he needs. So you guys, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So this is the Ani bag. Look how pretty, it comes with a little sticker, double zipper, all that good stuff. So I wanted it durable, it got a nice heavy grip. It has, hey wait, this doesn't have the, th this is why we have this one here. No, just get a new one. <laughs> so anyways, it has a little mesh zipper up here. I swear it does, Kristen. And so I like to have visibility through everything, you guys. So you could put your stuff in here and not have to rummage through. It's all padded and nice, and, and you have the sides. Not only that, you have the nice front, like a camera bag clip here. So you can put like, let's say your flex shaft in here because it's very durable, again, padded. And then a zipper for all your small little doodads. Ah, bless your heart, okay. Okay, so we've got one, okay, so this is the zipper at the top. So this would be like, if you did this, you did that, you know. Yes, so you guys, this and again, this would flip open. So it was a way, like if you just wanted to put some stuff in on traveling, it was accessible. Okay, so we're hearing two things. So we don't need to travel with it and we like the wheels. So you guys, we have two scenarios. See, this is why I'm torn, you guys. I don't know which one to make. The wheels, no wheels, maybe we'll do two, who knows? Because this was doing really good. Oh, and it had a shoulder strap too, hold on. So it had a shoulder strap and we even had a soft little thing. So when you put it on your shoulder, it was like nice and comfy, you know, didn't hurt. It was a really nice bag, you know? So I might bring this back and maybe add, maybe add, um, what do you call it? One with wheels, I don't know. So keep the comments coming on what would you guys like in a wheel. So I heard Myra's input. She says some with zippers and compartments. Yes, I'm with you on that. So thank you for the feedback, you guys. Yeah, Carol, you little woman after my own heart, make both. That's right. So that's another, yeah, because you know what's funny, you guys? You guys think like, oh, I was at the SEMA Auto Show, and I remember this guy adamantly wanted a bag. So I had one like on display on the table and he's like, I really want the bag. So we literally took his jewel tool out of the box, put in all his, all his stuff in the bag and he has a picture of it in front of my booth holding his little Ani bag with his jewel tool. Proudest guy in the world. So I know it works, it's very convenient. So, all right, noted, check, got it. Noted, working on it. We are been, we've actually been working on the bag, so we'll just put it in gear, move it forward. Okay, so you guys, 
what else? Okay, so what are we going to do now? So do you want to see more glass? Um, I can show glass till the cow comes home. Yeah, so do you guys want to see anything else? I don't know. Anything else you guys want to see? What else can I show? So I can do another glass piece. It's just, you guys want to see? Sally puts the vacuum in the bag. You know the vacuum will fit in this bag. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So check it out. So the vacuum's right here. That's pretty smart, Sally. So the Sally says she puts the vacuum in the bag. That actually will work. Oh, yeah. You can see that. Interesting. Huh. Well, thank you, Sally. Sally's such a hot little chick, that lady. So thank you. I really listen to everybody, you guys. I'm telling you. And even when I posted the heart, you guys, remember the heart? I, when I posted to say thank you for you all, I showed the before and after. I really, when I said I thank you to all who helped I make this possible, it was really a collaborative um, event. And I thank you all. And I thank you again. So I listen. I really do. I promise. I promise. She wants to see gl grinding enamel coister. See, the problem I have, you guys, uh, that Ricky Frank only gave me these two pieces of enamel. Um, oh, wait, Lori gave me some enamel. Kristen, go see what's on the table. But I don't know if that's close in A. So um, Ricky only gave me, I'm going to actually zoom out on this. So Ricky gave me this. So this was the before close in A. You see how lumpy, and you can see the metal hanging out. It's very, very rough. So I ground that all down in one swoop, and then this, on that table right there, there's some pieces of enamel, right th by where the scotch bright wheels were, those little manjo wheels, right there. I remember seeing them. And then we did this on the live show, where we smoothed this entire surface from this lumpy bumpiness right here, and we smoothed all the metal with the cloisonne. Do you guys see that? So I'm running out of uh, cloisonne pieces, you guys. But it's the same scenario as uh, what I did with this. You know? Like, or even if you have just like stuff like this. This is Jerry's piece. You guys didn't find it? What are you talking about? It's just, there's like little pieces of stuff right there. Like, it looks like scrap. No? Okay. Okay, then, never mind. I swear, you guys, it's there. Just hold on one second. Y'all, you stand here. I promise you guys it's there, and I want to show someone who's asking. So bring me the camera. You guys, I'll be right back. Pan yeah, pan on the abrasive. I'll be right back. It's literally right here. This right here. Yeah, right here. These things. You know these. Okay, you guys. These are not. These are not closing A. These are not closing A at all. Yeah, I'll show overhead real quick. Yeah. So you would need. Uh, so for the enamel pieces, you get. I'm talking. So the enamel pieces. <laughs> it's a. It's a live show. Everybody here, wake up. Wake up Monday morning. Okay, you guys. So for the enamel, again, I'm going to say this again. The enamel in the stone, they're going to be almost the same process, but I'm just changing the grinding diamond. And I explained this before, and I'll say it again. So, yes, so there you go. But the grinding diamond is where you shift. You see how there's an... So... So the for the, the lapidary kit, you're always going to get the extra coarse diamond. Do we understand that? Look at me. The lapidary kits are always going to come with the extra coarse diamond. The enamel kit will come with the fine diamond. Do you see? To, to help you, yes. 
so this is still grinding look so you have the extra course that comes in back up more yarrow back up more back up more yeah so the extra course that came in the the lapidary kit remember this one has a core extra course a medium and a fine version so the fine in the medium i would suggest using on enamel because these are less chippy they will not allow your uh, glass to chip because the particles are closer together and it's, it's a cleaner grind whereas this is a little on the rough side and you see how big the circles are and could cause some chippage in the enamel but right now on the fused glass we use the extra core so linda says she understands yay that's my objective you guys here it's not to you know just show hey look what i made i want you guys to understand what each wheel is used for because when someone brings a piece to me that's the first thing i try to calculate in my head okay this is enamel let me get the finer grinding and then if i can't find my fine grinding i'll just use the medium grinding because i know i'm in a safe zone but I know that the extra course is going to be way too aggressive for enamel. But as you saw here, the fused glass can handle the extra course because it's much more dense. It's not as flaky, you know. So because you know it's all those little flakes of glass that you're um, that you're melting in the kiln. That you know sometimes if they didn't adhere perfectly, they go and chip off. So what else should we do? I don't know. So you guys, if you guys don't, who told you to do overhead? So on soft, no, soft stones, you guys, let me show you guys. Like soft stones, I've said this before. If it's a stone that is prone to flaking and chipping, you might want to, err on the side of caution and use a medium but that doesn't necessarily you know mean much is it soft or what it's just the type of stone that's flaky and it's just prone to chip and break and just crumble a crumbly stone how about that so if it's a crumbly stone you have to err on the side of caution when grinding so i would recommend using a medium or a fine grinding diamond so i want to show you I don't know if I have a crumbly stone, but you can. Who said that, Rita? Is that Rita Padula? Oh, Rita Ringer. Oh, I know Rita Ringer. Rita, I love you. Rita just said, cracks me up. Ani has to produce, direct, and star in her own TV show. I love it. Yes, I do. Story of my life. Okay. So you guys, I am going to show you guys, what else? Is, I'm trying to find like a stone that's kind of flaky, but I don't know, I don't have too many flaky stones. I try to stay away from flaky stones, to be quite honest with you. However, I do have a stone that, oh, I did this. This is a really hard stone to polish, apparently. It's, I forgot what it is, but it's like kind of really nasty. I don't remember what this is, but... Jeff from Dakota Stones, yeah, come back. You're too close. So Jeff from Dakota Stones brought me this in Tucson, and he scratched it up, and he even like initialed like a heavy metal band's logo on it, like really did a number on it just to test me. I have this on video. You guys can look at the YouTube video. It's on there. It's from Tucson. It's a YouTube video I have. So he scratched this up to test me to see if he if I can polish this very difficult and it's extremely flaky to this uh, this stone and I said it's just fine give it to me and so I polished it as you can see it's gorgeous gorgeous um, and he was like in awe Jeff was like turns to Rita R Rita Padilla from uh, Impressa and goes man I was trying to stump Ani but man that's a hard stone to polish and she polished it I'm like duh what do I tell you guys we don't discriminate here at Jewel Tool the diamonds will polish any stone and I did finish polishing this with the felt wheel by the way you guys 
stone. This was a flaky stone. If you guys know, I'll figure out. I can't remember what the name of the stone is, but it's on my YouTube video. Yes, Labradorite. Yes, Labradorite. I actually, after that, I did a Labradorite at, uh, in Tucson, and it was flaky. That is correct. There, uh, there are the Labradites that are flaky, but nonetheless, even the Labradorite, I still was grinding with a coarse and just was very careful <coughs> at how I was grinding, by the way. You'll know. The stone will start talking to you, just like I tell you. You'll know. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm actually, so if you guys are satisfied with the glass, I'm going to show you guys some other things that people keep asking me. Um, the two-inch brushes, someone asked, right, Kristen? No? <laughs> huh? Oh, okay. Okay, so that's the, the chip I just fixed right now would help her. So follow exact. Yes, perfect. So that so she had a chip for her closing a piece. Use the same, but be just be careful to not use the extra coarse diamond when grinding enamel closing a. That's all you guys have to do. Just be mindful of what you're working on. If it's delicate and fragile, just think of like you're going to put cashmere in the washer. Wait a minute. Let's use our brain. Uh, is this a good idea? Should I put it on the super fast cycle? Should I put it in the hot cycle? Should I put it in the hand wash cold perhaps? These are the things you ask yourself when working on a stone. What are you going to do? Should I go full head speed ahead on something soft and cashmere like closing enamel? No. Go on the side, ear on the side of caution and use the finer grinding. That's the gentle hand wash cycle. You know, kind you know what I mean? You know, but if you have like jeans and whatever, go for it. Throw it in there. Turn on the super long cycle and that's your extra coarse diamond. Grind that mother. <laughs> I don't know. It's like not even like I do laundry. I, what an analogy I used. Okay. So you guys, I'm gonna show you guys a ring. I think it was a ring. What was it? That I did I was gonna finish, was I? Oh, I know. I was gonna finish this uh, bezel. Everyone keeps asking me how to clean up, uh, finish a bezel. So, here, let me go ahead and c get a piece. Okay, so did it clear it up? Okay, so this is just a raw soldered bezel, you guys. So, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to first flatten, or maybe I'll clean up the sides and then flatten the edge. I don't know what I'm going to do. But a lot of people I see to flatten these, they're using like emery paper and they're going like back and forth I, I always see that like they're going to figure eight zoom me out actually hold on hold on you guys so they go on a flat piece of sandpaper here let's do this flat piece of sandpaper and they're like here do a figure eight la 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 okay no that's not that accurate you guys let me show you how you can get it really nice and accurate a flat piece so I'm actually going to use, you can take any sandpaper, you guys. So if you're scared about how much you're going to grind, use like a Trizac, the green. Or take your 220 grit purple, which is a great um, option. If I find it, that would be great. Here we go. Good thing I'm organized. 220 grit purple. Perfect. So if it doesn't sit flat, you can totally take care of it. So let me show you guys a way to hold this. So I'm going to put it at full speed. And so you're just going to hold it real quick like this. Look. So you can see immediately. Here, actually, let me go ahead and darken that. We're going to go ahead and darken that so you guys can see it. Wait. So you'll totally see what I mean by... Okay, I don't want it to be that close. I want people to get a, a visual, like, you know, a perspective. Okay. So you guys, I went ahead and darkened it. So I want you just to grip it real quick, just like so, and just hold it there. And you can see it right now, how it's grinding. Do you guys see? I'm going to stop, 
And you guys can see where there's still areas that need to be held, but I could see it. So it's going to be done really fast and nice and even. So I'll make sure I got no high and low spots. There you go. Do you guys see? When all the black is gone, that means I'm even. So you tell me, why on earth would I sit here and do this figure eight pattern here over and over and over again? Why? When I have a jewel tool. And there, this will sit so flat on a piece. Do I have a flat piece? Look, boom, you can hear that, how it just solid hits that. Look at that. Airtight, baby. This, this probably isn't even flat, but I'm just saying, super, super flat. You can't get any better. And look, I actually noticed it's not completely flat to the all the way, but it's okay because it's still going to make contact. But let's say that you're soldering and you want to make sure that's more. Well, I'll by all means, you guys, look, you can darken it again. I just noticed that. Do you guys see there's like a little black edge? Do you guys see that right here? So go ahead and do it again. Could you imagine doing this by hand? Oh, you'll be there for a while. This was not very even. This is like a motor running at 5,000 RPM. Your hand is not moving at no 5,000 RPM, just so you know. So let's turn it on full speed. So I'm just going to concentrate on that one area, but maintaining a nice flat area. So you're just nice and even everywhere. And boom, do you guys see that? Gone. Perfect, even flat. Oh my God, that's like so pretty. Look at how even. So you guys see the accuracy and precision, no matter what you do, can't even be achieved like this uh, by hand. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh my God, Myra, I swear, Myra, I've seen the same people. Myra says that she's seen people on Facebook cleaning their bezels with a paint stick and sandpaper. I'm telling you guys, me too. I have seen it and I just like want to cry. But yeah, so all these little pits and stuff, just hold it there and get rid of. Do you guys see how I got rid of all those pits? I'm using the fine scratch eraser. Okay, see that? I'm using, I'm sorry you guys. So I'm just using the fine scratch eraser to smooth all that lumps and bumps. Here, let me go ahead and darken it so you guys see what I'm doing. Let me I'm still gonna make I'm still gonna make my way around one more round. Yes, go ahead. No, no, ask the question. Oh. So there. So you got a lump, just hold it there and smooth it out. Ta da Beautiful. Look at that. And then you can from here, you're ready to go. And then let's say that that back side you don't want is rough, but you know, say it's going to be exposed for a pendant or something. So you can smooth it with the felt uh, with the Scott magic eraser right now. Get rid of those scratch patterns. Just hold it in another direction. And there you go. Look at that. Like, that is ridiculous. You're telling me you want me to rub-a-dub-dub -dub this on a stick? No, thank you. Or on a piece of sandpaper like Myra said? No, thank you. Okay, so from here. And once you guys set it, like I said, you can use this magic eraser to smooth the edges. But I just want to show you guys the fine polish. I have a question looming. So someone has asked a question. I just want you to know that Kristen is waiting for me to finish to ask me this question. So keep your questions coming. That's the felt wheel. So look, if the lines are going this way, I'm going to tilt it a little bit and kind of like polish it in this direction kind of go up and down and look that's all the paths I need you can do more one more if you feel necessary but you really don't need to be there too much on for that do you guys see the fluidity oh my god gorgeous and then same here hold it there Okay, see that too? Well, we got one more side to do and then I'll do the back side. 
and then I'll answer some questions. So when you get to that corner, just give it a little roll, give it another roll, and then continue. Again, I'm holding it at a little angle. Instead of holding it straight, kind of holding it at an angle, combating any kind of scratch patterns that I had. Kind of get rid of that compound. You guys see how I did that? Bye. So now I'll do the back. So look at how pretty this is, by the way, you guys. Let me show you. Oh, yeah. And then we do the backside again. Now, listen, when you're doing the backside polish, if you're having a hard time holding it for the polish, you can polish section by section because you're not changing the. Oh, let's just look at that, you guys. Let's just take a little moment. Okay, and so, like, if you can do it section by section, if you can, you want to do it all in one shot. Let me show you guys how to do that. Maybe you'll do section by section. You guys see that? And you can shoot it all in one shot like this. Get your fingers out of the way, and there you go. You guys see that? Oh, my God. Okay, so from here, if you want a final high polish, use your... Use your magic buff that says do not use compound and polish that sucker. But before you use your magic buffs, you guys, make sure you wipe it down. Hold on. Let me get my wipe. Make sure you wipe it down to take off any kind of excess compound or even compound from your fingers. Just real quick. And you guys will see. So you see that little rub marks right there? You see it with the magic buff. Look at that polish you get. Woo! Woo! See that? Just a light little touch, and there you go, baby. Hold on. There you go. Look at that. And if you're going to do the sides, just be mindful. Pinch it right here. Do you guys see I'm pinching it with my left finger? And I'm going to use my index finger to push up against it like that and got that polish. Oh, oh, do it again on the other side. Just a quick little zhuzh. Beautiful. And there you go. Let me get rid of that compound right there. There you go. Actually, no, that came in from inside of it. Get rid of it and then just give it another hit. There you go. Beautiful. So, let's just clean up my fingerprints and show you that. Pretty nice, huh? Do I get some love? Someone talk to me. I feel like I'm blind out here. Oh, Kristen's on the phone. Crap. So the magic buff, um, I honestly I don't know how well it works on polymer clay. I haven't really spent the time um, to work on it on metal on polymer clay, but I can still see that. So. I don't know. Right now I have metal on here, so I can't really even show you on um, polymer clay. I'd have to test that. I'll get back to you if the magic buff works on polymer clay. Right, Di Diana? Diana Schnitzka said that her bezels have not looked as good as they have been after she's been using the jewel tool. Okay. So, uh, no, Kristen, what was the question that you had for me? There's a lot. Guys, I love you. Okay, so you guys, if you look back, I want to say like early April, a YouTube video and on Facebook, we did a cup. What happened to my cup? Oh, here it is. This one. We fixed the chip out of the glass that came from my house. So listen, so you guys, look at me. See, we had the chip that time. You can watch how I did this, but did you see how I fixed the chip today on this piece of glass? Crystal, glass, same scenario, boys and girls. Do you, are you with me? Waterford crystal. I don't care if it's Lali crystal. I love Lali crystal, by the way. Anyone want to send me gifts? 
That's the gift you send me. Baccarat crystal, I'm not part, <laughs> I'll take them all. But all of those crystals, all the glass are going to be, you can take care of them using the diamond wheels. Now again, I'm going to reiterate, these are the diamond wheels I used in the lapidary kit. Maybe I should call the lapidary kit from now on, hard and soft stones. Lapidary kit, hard and soft stones, glass, Waterford crystal, now you know what I mean? It, you, so this is a great kit that'll take care of everything. However, again, when you're working on the stems or the bottom base where it's a thin area, that's when you have to use and you have to determine whether or not to use the grinding wheels in different grades. So listen to me. So again, I'm going to say this again. I've said this already three times or this will be the third time. This, so the diamond wheels right here, these all come in the uh, diamond lapidary kit, okay? The hard and soft stone kit. But with this kit, you're gonna get the extra coarse diamond to combat all those hard stones. Look, I can't even do this right. Right here, look, you guys see that? Okay, so this, travel with me, dun, 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 has other family members. They're not as mean as the he is, there's the medium right here, and there's a finer one. So when you have a chip on a stem or something, you would maybe consider using a medium or a fine to combat that chip just to make sure it's not going to you know, chip anymore or flake. It's just a finer grinding. Remember, this is the mean guy. He, he handles everything. He's like the big boss. Okay, so we have another question that segues beautifully. Go ahead. Okay, so Margaret, Margaret, your question is perfect. So I love this, you guys. This is what you need to know from me. Pick my brain because it's so hard to explain this to you on paper. Margaret asks, she has the hard and soft stone kit. This is the kit I just showed you that comes with the mean guy, okay? This guy. So she asked, when would you use the other grades of diamond? Okay, so we'll go back over here. So again, this is a family of grinding. All they do is grind. They don't know anything else but grind stones and glass and anything hard and carbide. So again, this one comes in your hard and soft stone lapidary kit. So this one comes in that one. Forget that, okay? So you're left with a medium and the fine. These are exceptional for if you're working, see there you are, if you're working on enamel. Perfect, okay? F you can buy them separately. They also come in a kit. They also come mounted in a kit, but you can buy them separately. And these are great for working on enamel, the Waterford crystal, the stemmed glasses, because they're not as aggressive as the mean guy. Yeah, so if you look, you guys, um, it's not only just the grades. If you look, the construction is the circles are smaller uh, versus the large aggressive one. So that really works well with the less chipping hazard or any of that nature. You guys, here's the fine too. You guys see that? But then uh, the same token, they are considered grinding. So they're still in the, you know, the aggressive family. <laughs> Did I just do that? <laughs> okay, so now we have an unrelated question. Go ahead. Okay, so that's a fine. I'll show you this. I love uh, what's it called, epoxy. And okay, so sh she wants to know what wheels to use on epoxy resin and whatever else. UV. Okay, it, uh, uh, all of that. Uh, hold on, I'm going to show you how that works. Give me a second. First, I have to find something to show you. I swear I saw it earlier. Give me Stop following me. <laughs> You're always going to follow me. Okay, so you guys, this is not the perfect example of what I wanted, but I, I, it might have to do for now because I don't have any more. Oh, maybe it's here. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so I'll show you guys real quick. So this is 
this is resin it's a nice hard resin it doesn't make a difference o honestly look at me it as long as the resin has cured and is not gooey if the epoxy has cured and it's not gooey i deal with high-end manufacturers who work with epoxy and they call it italian enamel it's not no enamel it's uh, just epoxy colored epoxy so as long as the epoxy is hardened you can use the following wheels i'm about to show you right now so all the wheels that i'm about to show you are found in the polymer clay and resin add-on kit or the kit so you guys i have them all here oh my goodness what has happened here okay all right cool so the basically i'm using the micro finishing films and i'm gonna follow with the buff so let me just show you guys what i mean they're all micro finishing films so huh yeah overhead so where depending on how the situation is like for example since this has a sharp corner i'm not gonna want to use like something that has like the, the white cushion i'm going to probably use one of my wheels that has like the what do you call it that has the um the bump on thank you thank you so let's say that you know that's all rounded but let's say i want to round more of this or fix some of the na like so this was nasty i've already fixed this a million times so i'm going to leave that side but this the whole edges used to look like that just to give you guys a perspective of what you can do with this so let's just go ahead and get this corner down more watch this and i'll do the whole surface so you're gonna run this you're gonna run this at slow speed and it says it on it fine slow speed okay doesn't get any more easier than that so you can run this at f uh, if you run it at higher speed it is just gonna grind faster so I'm just going to smooth that. So it's a little fine to get rid of that. So if you really wanted to get that down, hold on. You might want to opt to do, where'd it go? I just had it. Oh, here it is, the course. This is the micro finishing course. This is what it's great for. Watch this. So watch how it'll just sand this down, like within a second. Look. I'm using for flat pieces, Yarrow. So like, let's say I want to get this nice and even like this, kind of shorten it up, kind of round it over a little. You guys see that? So we kind of rounded that whole area down, change the shape there. Okay. So now I'm going to actually kind of feather that in a little rounded right there. There you go. Kind of get that going. Beautiful. Now I'm going to use, so that was the course. I got to find my other polymer clay stuff. I think I have it on display. Did we use it for one of the, I don't know. I don't know where my kit is. I have these all organized, but it's missing. It, it's really missing. Someone took it. Did I take it? So I will carry on. So I'm going to jump a step and use the find. Again, slow speed, and look, do you guys see this? So you're just going to follow here. I'll go ahead and... Yes, so watch this, you guys. This is going to be really quick. Thank you guys for that. Watch this. Because you guys do a lot of... And even if you do the resin, you guys, with the real pretty flowers... Like, you guys can do this and smooth all that nastiness and kind of blend the flowers into the resin. I've done this at shows. Women have brought me all their pieces. You guys see that? Super smooth. And so that was the very fine. You just want to roll over super lightly. And you guys see that? Right there. So from here, I'm going to go to the very fine. But for the love of God, I don't know where it is. So I'm going to use my very fine with the medium cushy. So you're going to watch me use this. I don't recommend using this on sharp corners, but <coughs> I know how to navigate around it. So let's get to town. So I'm not going to lift up at all because it'll catch this corner. So I'm going to keep it in the same direction and, sa and keep that in the same direction. 
So I'm using the medium soft cushion, but you have to really be careful to not catch an edge. So I'm going to hold it here and roll. Uh huh. Oh, it melted it. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, yeah. Okay. So who said that about the amber? Okay. So Donna said she just discovered she can't use the, she was working on amber. Oh, her first, okay. So her first project she discovered she can't use, I should pay attention more what I'm doing. She can't use um, the compound on the felt with amber. And I, t uh, actually, I should use that. I need to get in here more, but whatever. Um, she can't use compound on her felt with amber. Now, let me tell you something, Donna. Even if you didn't put the compound on the felt and you ran this at full speed, it'll still melt the amber. So compound or no compound, your felt at high speeds will eat through amber like butter just so you know. So now I'm going to run this uh, with the compound. See, my whole tray is missing compound with no compound. Where is that? Someone help me. I don't know. I'm asking. And no, you didn't sell it. <laughs> no. Oh, here it is. Here it is, you guys. Mm. Well, it was. It was one of the organizing trays. So I'm going to go ahead and use the um, the buff that says compound. Give and it's on the screen, you guys, what I'm using. However, I didn't sand here very nicely. I know I didn't, but I'm going to try to wiggle my way out of this because I didn't have the proper uh, item. Oh, there we go. We fixed it. <laughs> No, 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 I got it. I made it work. I'm telling you guys, it's not rocket science. When you work with the, um, the epoxy and the resin, you guys, it's so fun to clean up and change your shapes. Like, you can even change, like, cool shape. Like, look at this, you guys. I'm sorry, but I don't know about you, but have you seen this lately? Um, and I always say to touch it with a clean. So this was compound and... It says no compound, but you know, just to rem remove any kind of remnants, but epoxy polishes real fast, you guys. Just a light little just glide over and there you go. You guys see that? So even if you guys make cool like pieces, you guys can create cool geometric shapes so fast. And it's so fun because it's not, you know, laborsome. It's like, hello, look what I just did. We just got rid of that whole sharp corner. Look at that. Yes, so I w so Myra, I was going slow speed on these. You see slow speed? All of these micro finishing films all say slow speed. So the only time I went high speed is when I used the buffs. You see that? I like when this buff gets a little flatter. Kind of like a little sander, if you will. Do you guys see how this is super fluffy? This one for some reason has through the years, the compound really has gotten embedded in it, and I love it. I, so I, you, for the compound stage, you really don't want too much fluffers. You guys see that? Can it keep it a little bit more embedded? You guys see what mine looks like? So uh, both of these I use fast speed. But I just want to show you guys a little my little technique on how I get my buff. So this buff's a it's not fluffy by all means look at it you see how it's got and it's kind of like rough if i feel it you could tell that there's been compound on there but i want that because i want that to be like my little pre-polisher my little sander so does that help okay oh so if you have the polymer flat kit and you don't have the coarse and the medium. I have the coarse and the medium. We have, oh, we don't. We're going to add this kit because 
You know, you guys, we get this question a lot. If we're going to add the whole kit of the micro finishing films mounted, and I think it's time we added this because we get a lot of requests on this. So it's these, so it's the coarse, it's the medium, it's the fine, and it's the very fine. So have these mounted, like this is what they look like on the bump on. So you guys, we will put that up. Um, to have you mounted because I know I, having those grades are very handy. There's nothing, ugh, when the micro finishing film works, saves you all the time in the world. It's like the fine, so micro finishing film <coughs> is lovely because they're round balls. And again, round balls that are the same shape, same size, same height, and they're perfectly micro replicated next to each other. So they're like boop, 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 boop perfectly so when they're sanding they give you an even sand so when you guys are using like the the sand paper the emery paper all of those micro meshes they are not micro replicated to perfection so you're always going to have a problem where it's going to have a high and a low scratch spot so it's going to be really hard to take that to a final hot polish because the whole way out of following all those sandpaper steps you're trying to combat every high low scratch and it's really difficult to do that that's why the micro finishing films are lovely you know when you're done with one grade you go to the next and it satisfies all the scratch pattern from the previous and next and you're done and then you're at the polish and you're enjoying life no I'm kidding <laughs> I don't know okay yeah so that is the kit with the bump on oh that kit is the bump <laughs> that kit is the one with the bump on and we'll be adding so stay tuned just to our website we'll be adding the full uh, grade set mounted on our site that's true that's a good one we've been we should have been putting that up on a while ago so what else so for god's sakes i fixed the chips i did fused glass the enamel Okay, so I think that handles today. So, oh, we have a question, but don't remember you. Remember, you guys, the Mother's Day sale has been extended, and free shipping is still alive and well until midnight tonight. Because I'm just a softie, and everyone asked for it, and some people didn't have the means until today. So, yes. So Myra has a question. What's up, my girl? Yes. So we have actually Jolie only today here. And we actually have a visitor here. Uh, we have Max. Where's Max? My sister's here with her cute little dog. Max Alito. Max. Yeah, let's show him. And bring Jolie too. Salt so yes. So we call them salt and pepper. You want to be on? No, you don't want to. Okay. So this is my Maxos. Hi, Maxolos. Max, say hi to everybody. This is Jolie's buddy. I love you. Okay, so hold on. So no one wants to be on camera. Okay, so you guys, so this Max, Max, say hi to everyone. Say hi. Uh, say hi to all my aunt. Uh, say hi, aunties, friends, and family, and customers. We love you. That was Max. Okay, Max, now see you later, alligator. Okay, let's bring Jolie. Jolie, Jolie just got a bath this weekend. Oh, and my daughter surprised me by giving her a real cute little bath. Jolie, you guys, say hi to everybody. So this is my Jolinator. She doesn't have her bows because she had her bath. Mm -hmm. This is the love of my life. I love you. Okay, and that's all you guys got. Okay, so got to give one more love. So very important question. You guys, you don't understand. I'm a dog lover. I'm an animal lover. So anytime that someone has to ask about dog, skirt, skirt, I stop and I have to answer it. So... And another thing too, you guys, I support, so a lot of the proceeds from Jewel Tool <laughs> go to supporting rescue organizations around the, uh, around the United States. It's not just here in Los Angeles. So I support a lot of rescuers. It's funny too because I always know whenever they need anything, they just tag me, send me a private message, and I never say no. So, so all my dogs are rescues and support that guys however yeah my dog's a rescue I'm sure Mingo at one point was a breeder's dog but he, we found him and he's a rescue he needed help anyways so what do we got 
Um, ah, okay, now, that, now, now, now. So Margaret says she would like to see a deluxe version of the hard and soft stone kit with the other two grinding diamonds. So now let me tell you something. This is what she means, Yara. Look, so can you just give me a little pan? So what she means is she wants to see this whole section right here pretty much with these two. Look, let's add some family members. This is what she wants to see. Excuse me, boys and girls, get out of the way. We need more space. The family just grew. More babies came along. There you go. There. That's what Margaret has suggested. All the way to here. Look at that. This whole section right here. No, pan out. Okay. So from here to there is what she said. So, you guys, that would be great. But I want to tell you something, Margaret. Margaret. I've seen what you've been working on, Margaret. There's no secret. We've seen it. You have excelled gor gorgeous pieces you are making. But I just don't like to do that because I don't want people to get confused. But it's actually a really good idea because then they can have a choice right then and there and they can make a decision of which one. So that's why I put the kits right here, all three of these. I put all three of these as a kit to buy separately with the cushions and it mounted. So this is a kit on its own. Uh, but, Margaret, I might just do that. I might make a deluxe extended uh, lapidary kit. Thank you very much. I listen to everything you guys say. You guys are so, like, smart and have such like you know knowledge and experience from you know the business that you guys had before the lives that you led before you know so it, i listen to everything that people have always advised me on i just want you to know i'm that kind of person um i you know i'm not one of those people it's my way or the highway no i won't go on the highway if i you're telling me that it's not a good time to go on the highway i won't but if you guys tell me like good things, I'll definitely listen and I'll incorporate that. So I'm all ears, you guys. Thank you so much for caring and helping me out. We got another suggestion, so go ahead. Ah, okay, you know that has been big, the seashells. So everyone's as been asking me, it's not just today, about seashells. You know what, you guys, I'm going to do my very best tonight to grab seashells for my kids what they've collected through the years and I'm going to give you tips on how to polish them how to grind them flat if you're going to put them as a jewelry you're going to glue them on a picture frame you know I actually did a whole presentation like I told you guys before with Martha Stewart's team they were all into the shell polishing and shell grinding so I will give you guys my tips and tell you how to keep yourself safe and how to do it on the jewel tool and believe it or not, the scratch erasers are going to come into play. Yup, I said it. Scratch erasers on uh, shells. Mm, you best believe it. So you guys, stay tuned for tomorrow's show while I work on shells. That's a good one. Ching! You see how quick and easy that was? No? Um, so again, don't forget, free shipping, you guys, ends tonight. Please, please remember. Because if you guys beg me again, I'm going to have to say no. Huh? <coughs> yeah, for free shipping over $199. <coughs> Oh, trust me, you guys are getting there. You guys like piling everything in you, you can possibly think of you need. So it's a great time to stock up. And again, please be patient, you guys, on any orders that include mounting or bump on. We will be getting them this week and the flex diamond and the, the grinding diamond. So if you guys have an order that involves any of these diamonds or any of the black cushions <coughs> and... Um, just know that 3M is doing their best to expedite those to me this week. They prioritize the essential workers and the you know all that products that they have to get out. So I understood. So I'm asking you guys to understand. We do work with 3M. We do these guys right here. You know them. Um, so I appreciate and thank you for your understanding and support. 
and I will see you guys here tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. I'm Annie, you know? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so you guys, see you guys here tomorrow. You guys see, life should be enjoyed. Don't take everything so seriously. Don't, for God's sakes, don't listen to the news today. Don't. Just live your life. Stay in your own lane. Love one another. Be kind to one another. And just create and do what makes you happy. And that is better than any kind of medicine. That is better than any kind of, you know, immune booster you could think of. Happiness is like medicine. I know <laughs> I'm not in any means giving any kind of health advice. I just am trying to send you guys happiness and love from my shop to your homes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you here same time, same place. Thank you guys all so much for watching. It was lots of fun. Bye.